I'm going to share with you my predicted topics for paper two, AQA GCSE chemistry exam 2025. The first topic is rate of reaction graphs and factors affecting reaction rate. This is a guaranteed topic in your exam. You will never find paper two uh, exam without this topic. Uh, you need to know how to draw a graph when the rate changes. Usually in this exam or in this question in the exam, they will provide you with a graph for a certain reaction rate. They're going to provide you with a certain reaction and the steps of that particular reaction, how they measure the rate, and they're going to give you the graph. And they're going to ask you to draw or sketch a graph when the rate changes, either due to the change in the concentration of the one of the reactants or a change in the conditions that will affect the rate of the reaction, like adding a catalyst or like the temperature or pressure or whatever. So remember that the curve will be steeper if the rate increases and will be less steep if the rate decreases. Also, the higher the final concentration of the product will be higher if we increase the concentration of the reactant but if we keep the concentration of the reactant the same and we change other factors then the the uh, the curve will be uh, either steeper or less steep depending on the rate going to increase or decrease but the final concentration of the product will remain the same and then how to calculate the rate of the reaction from the graph. Remember that to do that, you need to draw the tangent at a particular time and then calculate what the slope of that tangent. And that will be the rate of the reaction from the graph. This is very common in the exam. Also, you need to know the different factors that affect the rate with explanation. So you're going to use the collision theory to explain. Remember the effect of temperature, how temperature increase will increase the rate of the reaction and how the concentration of solution increasing concentration will increase the rate. Also, pressures in case of gases will also increase the rate and surface area to volume ratio will also increase the rate of the reaction. And finally, the use of the catalyst. And remember that the use of the catalyst will increase increase the rate due to the decrease in the activation energy, which means more successful collisions. Sometimes they even ask you to sketch the, um, the uh, energy profile for the catalyzed reaction and the uncatalyzed reaction. So you need to master this. And then a topic two, reversible reactions and position of equilibrium. Again, this is a guaranteed topic in your exam. In the reversible reaction, there will be reactants that are gonna react to give you products, and then the products react again to give you the reactant, and these are reversible reactions. So you need to know what is meant by equilibrium and how when the equilibrium is reached, remember that the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction, and the concentration of all reactants and products remain constant. They are not the same, but they remain constant. You need to know the different factors that affect the position of the equilibrium because they will ask you about one or two of these uh, factors like temperature. So to know the effect of the temperature, you need to know which um, direction is the exothermic reaction because increasing the temperature will push the reaction towards the endothermic reaction. And then the concentration, and that's only for solutions. So if you increase the concentration of the reactant, that will push the reaction towards the product. And then the pressure, the pressure in case of gases only, increasing the pressure will push the reaction to the side which has the lower number of moles. Uh, so remember this, just need to know which side has less number of moles. And finally, the use of the catalyst. Remember that the use of the catalyst will not affect the position of the equilibrium, it will only allow the equilibrium to be reached faster because it will increase the rate of the forward and reverse reaction at the same uh, rate. And remember that catalysts are usually transition metals because it's very common to give you a list of um, elements and ask you which one can be used as a catalyst. Remember that you need to choose the transition metal. And then organic chemistry, the first topic in organic chemistry is the hydrocarbon. So it's very common in the exam to ask you to write a balanced equation for complete combustion of a certain organic molecule. Just practice these type of questions. The um, boiling point and viscosity of alkanes uh, with increased size, how the boiling point increases and viscosity increases with the increased size of the hydrocarbon. This hasn't been in the exam lately, so it's very probable, uh, it's very, um, I would say, um, 
it might be in the exam this year. And then fractional distillation of crude oil, although this is a very common question in the exam, we thought it was in the exam over the last two, three years, but I would never exclude a fractional distillation of crude oil. Um, they tend to ask you a question about it. So just make sure that you understand it well. Uh, cracking um, and the complete com equation for cracking and the conditions for cracking, which are high temperature, use of steam or a catalyst. Uh, this wasn't in the exam last year, so I would say that it's very likely that it will be in the exam this year. And then the test for the double bond, which is the bromine water test, where the double bond or the alkenes will do uh, cause decolorization of the bromine from orange to colorless. It's very common in the exam. Almost in every year, there will be uh, the bromine water test. And then one of the topics that hasn't been in the exam lately is fermentation of glucose and formation of alcohol. So the product of the fermentation and also the optimum conditions of the fermentation, very important this year, very uh, highly likely it might be in the exam this year. Um, and then carboxylic acid, so structure formula of carboxylic acid and its farm functional group. Uh, this wasn't in the exam last year, but it was in the exam two years ago. I wouldn't exclude it as well, just in case. Um, the, if they ask you about the carboxylic acid, they like to ask uh, about the why carboxylic acids are weak acids and also the different acid properties of carboxylic acids, their reaction with uh, carbonate and how they produce the carbon dioxide. And they may ask you about the test for the carbon dioxide gas as well. Uh, reaction between acids and alcohol would give you an ester. Um, also, it's possible that may, they may ask you this uh, and usually they would ask you to name the ester. And then polymers. Polymers will definitely be in the exam. I've never seen an exam without a question about polymers. The most common one of the polymers is the addition polymers. Almost in every single exam or the majority of exam, there there is a question about the addition polymers. Addition polymers comes from the addition of alkenes. So you need to know how to draw the addition polymer from alkene, and you should be able to identify the repeating unit for any polymer. And then the one that wasn't in the exam lately is the uh, condensation polymer. So I would say it, it's probably highly likely it would be in the exam this year. So how to name the small molecule product from the condensation polymer like water and also naturally occurring polymers like cellulose, like DNA, like proteins. They like to ask this question uh, and it hasn't been in the exam lately. So I would say it's uh, highly likely it would be in the exam this year. And if they ask about DNA, they like to ask you to uh, describe the shape of the DNA. DNA. Uh, and then uh, topic uh, six, which is chemical analysis. So chemical analysis, which is the chemical tests. So chemical tests will always be in the exam. They will ask you at least uh, three, four different chemical tests in the exam. You need to revise all the chemical tests for gases, for anions, and for cations. Uh, for me in this topic, what hasn't been in the exam lately is pure substances and formulation and how to um, judge whether a substance is pure or not based on its melting point. So this hasn't been in the exam lately. Uh, very um, highly likely it will be in the exam this year. Remember that if the uh, substance is impure or if there is some impurities, then the uh, melting point will decrease and the substance will tend to melt over a range of temperature rather than having a sharp melting point. The chemical test for sulfate ion, anion or sulfate ion, this is very, very common almost in every single exam. Remember how to test for sulfate when you acidify with HCl and then you use barium chloride and sulfate will give you a white precipitate. Uh, flame test, every single uh, exam, there will be one, at least one flame test. Last year it was for sodium. So we just revised the colors for the different cations or different metals in the flame test. And then sodium sodium hydroxide test for cations, um, the one that hasn't um, uh, featured in the exam over the last five years was test for iron, iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus, so very highly likely might be in the exam this year. Remember that aluminium is different from the other element when it comes to sodium hydroxide test because it not just give you a white precipitate, if you have excess of the sodium hydroxide, the precipitate will disappear or will re-dissolve to give you a clear solution. Just revise all 
your chemical test and don't forget about the instrumental analysis as well they like to ask you about uh, why instrument you use of instrumental methods is preferred over the chemical test because it's fast uh, faster or it's more rapid and it's more accurate and then paper chromatography. So paper chromatography, there was a long question about paper chromatography last year and the year before. For me, it's less likely to be in the exam this year because there are a lot of other things that they can ask you about, but I would never exclude anything. So last year and the year before, there were a long question about paper chromatography. Um, topic seven is gases in the atmosphere. There wasn't much in the exam last year about this topic, which is in your textbook. This is topic nine, gases in the atmosphere. So I would focus on this topic this year. There is, um, um, it's highly likely that there will be several questions about this topic this year, especially carbon footprint, meaning and how to reduce the carbon footprint have been in the exam over the last uh, four or five years. So make sure that you know this because they need to test all the a specification over a certain period of time. So I would never exclude this topic. The effect of greenhouse gases on the average air temperature, I would read about that as well. Just make sure that I know it. The atmospheric pollutant from fuel, there will always be a question about atmospheric pollutant from fuel. Every year they ask about a different um, uh, pollutant. So uh, make sure this year specifically to focus on carbon monoxide and sulfur dioxide. And then gases in the atmosphere and how the evolution of the gases in the atmosphere, uh, it's very important, hasn't been in the exam uh, lately. So I would all, always um, also make sure that I know this topic uh, properly. And finally, the last topic, which is using resources. So this is topic 10 in your textbook. It has a lot of things to ask you about, but uh, usually they don't tend to ask the same question uh, to successive uh, year. Uh, so uh, the HEPA process, very common in the exam in general, and making ammonia in the lab, um, it hasn't been in the uh, exam lately. So I would make sure that I know about making ammonia. Um, and then the HEPA process itself last year, there was a question about the HEPA process where they gave you a sketch of or a diagram of the reactor and they asked a couple of questions, but they didn't ask about the process itself so the different conditions of the process so i'll make sure that i revise the conditions how the change in the condition will increase the rate uh, and will increase the or affect the yield the rate and the cost uh, because if they don't get you the ask you about the hyper process itself uh, they might ask you about a different reaction will they give you a reversible reaction and they will give you the industrial process and ask you to comment on uh, or evaluate or comment on the optimal conditions uh, for the uh, process. So I would revise the HEPA process so I can use the same uh, analogy where if they give me any uh, questions similar to that in the exam. Uh, polymers, uh, so thermal softening and thermal setting uh, polymers was in the exam last year. So for me, it's much less likely to be in the exam again this year. They wouldn't ask the same question about polymers in two successive years. Uh, high density, if they ask, they might ask about high density and low density polymers though. Uh, corrosion rusting and how to prevent rusting was in the exam last year. Uh, still less likely in my opinion. Uh, aluminium as well, um, uh, it was in the exam last year as well. It's less likely. I would never exclude anything anyway, but it's less likely. Uh, composite material was in the exam as well last year, so um, less likely as well. Uh, potable water, there is always a question about potable water in every other e uh, year. So last year there was a long question about potable water and wastewater treatment. So for me, it's less likely to be in the exam this year. Then fertilizers. So fertilizers hasn't been in the exam lately. Uh, so I would make sure that I revise this topic uh, properly because there is a high chance it might be in the exam this year. And then clay ceramic hasn't been in the exam for so many years. So make sure that you know about this one. 